There was an event earlier this year, I think it was called Thirst 2015. Mm -hmm. I think the event was called off at the 11th hour. Yeah. So is, is this common actually? And um, which brings to the question, I mean, how, how is GAB's uh, stakeholder relations with the government? Mm -hmm. Whilst we, we tried really hard um, to engage with, with all the stakeholders and uh, the authorities that um, at the 11th hour, um, an event like this, um, with what happened uh, in, in Malaysia the, um, uh, more than a year before that in the meantime, um, the, the general feeling was it was too sensitive. Um, there were potentially um, issues around um, drugs, there were potentially issues that um, the Malaysian authorities were afraid uh, would have too negative an impact on this market. Now we had done everything and I can show you all the permits we have and all the work that we've done, all the interaction. And if I talked to the individual parties involved, they would all still tell you today it should have taken place. But maybe the timing was not entirely right. Um, it's a lesson learned for our business. Um, I think we're willing to invest, that's where the AMP comes back in, we're willing to invest in this market. What we have to understand from our point of view also having international shareholders that um, alcohol in general, uh, selling beer in this market is a sensitive topic. Um, so we therefore also respect uh, the decisions taken. What we would have only hoped for is that in earlier stages, they would have tell, told us, no good, we don't like, instead of only just before. So despite getting all the permits, um, it's still a no-go in the end. And you said that GAB has actually learned its lesson. Does this mean that GAB will not be holding, um, will be not focusing so much on all these music events in the future, yeah. but instead move it towards, I mean, your budget will be moved towards a different focus right now? L longer term, no, definitely not. Because uh, if, if I think about platforms, relevant platforms for our brands, then um, uh, music is one of them. But I, I think the, the, the point is that we want to continue, but moving forward, we want to get even more security from the highest levels that if we do certain things, and it's completely transparent how we will do it, that there is buy-in, uh, that the authorities say it's absolutely fine. And if there is a 1% of things that they don't like, then I think we're better off not doing it. Um, that's maybe slightly disappointing. Um, on the other hand, um, and ever since Thirst, we've done some other events, non-electronic dance related, and they have worked. We did get the permits, so it, it, it can work in this market. Okay. Um, government has been ramping up its efforts on the contraband beers, yeah? So um, and this has contributed to GAB's growth in numbers. Mm. But what kind of improvement um, have we seen in terms of the illegal market share? And do you think this improvement is actually enough? Yeah. Or more could be done? The percentages of contraband beer officially publicized um, by customs is total alcohol around 17.5%. Um, if you compare East Malaysia with Peninsula Malaysia, in East Malaysia these percentages are much higher, whereas in Peninsula Malaysia they're lower. What we started to see 18 months ago is the numbers in Peninsula Malaysia were starting to go up. And that's where we've been on the journey, um, together with customs, with a number of raids over the last 12 months something like 1200 raids um, and what that does um, it puts maybe a little bit of a fear factor into the market um, you could argue these raids are only the tip of the iceberg but what it does um, it at least gives um, these illegal traders the feeling that it's not a complete free-for-all um, and from there we see a market normalization which we hope will continue